Welcome, Rain fans, to the AfterBuzz TV After Show for Rain Season 4, Episode 3. We have special guest Will Kemp in studio, so stay tuned. You're tuning in to the destination for TV superfan discussion, AfterBuzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Even though the show doesn't give you this theme song we do here on the After Show, that's the yes. reason to tune in. Another reason is we have our great co-host, Alina Vision. Hey, what's up, guys? You can follow me on all social media at Alina Vision, and then that's Vision with two S's. And as promised, we brought him in, very special guest, Will Kemp, who plays Lord Darnley. Welcome, Hello. Will. Hello. Good evening. Thank you. He you trekked can... out here, even on Oscar now. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to race back to catch it. But you guys can catch me at I am Will Kemp on Twitter and Instagram. I'd love to hear your thoughts about the show. Well, we're going we're to get it. Um, let's start overall. Let's, let's start in France. A lot going on in France. Um, we have we have Narcisse. We, we have the, the reunion between Narcisse and Catherine. Yay! Mm. So amazing. <laughs> they are just... Their chemistry together couldn't be better. I've so been looking forward to this completely. I love seeing them together, them being their awesomeness selves. Um, I think we've got some good things coming up with them, as we can see. Absolutely, and and you know, real, what is it like? To, how are they like in real life? Mm. What Meg and they actually do get on incredibly well. They are they are certainly the one would say the more mature of the cast they they have a great rapport on and off screen they're both intelligent they're both very very good and i think they they actually really thrive working together you can mm -hmm. actually see that that they that yeah. they feed very well off each other and the characters they play are, there's always a sense of um something something untoward is about mm -hmm. to happen whenever they're in the room together you feel a plot is mm -hmm. happening which is fantastic to watch right keeps you Absolutely. entertained. Oh, there's there's a lot of plots today. There's uh, the, we we um, going after the the position where the cardinal's kind of stepping in, taking Narcissus' position, mm. and then we have to figure out what's going on with Charles. And the best way is to get him a girl. <laughs> Absolutely, that solves most problems. <laughs> let's be honest. Exactly. Particularly at that age. Yeah. Particularly at that age for a, <laughs> for for a, a teenage guy. boy. Absolutely. Yeah. And whose idea was it? Narcissus. Narcissus. Exactly. Yeah. He knows what's up. <laughs> well, let's talk about that because. Um, you, you know, one of the things we, we, we just kind of talked about off air really fast was the mm. fact that uh, rain is going a little bit darker. And certainly. Definitely. And we've sort of kicked off in that vein, I feel, this, yeah. this yeah. time around. And especially with Charles, that's sort of in that vein. And you would think, like, you know, something like, okay, give him a girl, that'll solve it. Mm. But it doesn't seem. He, he goes, he just wants to talk about death. Yeah, completely. And uh, bless her. <laughs> oh, what's she got in store for her? That is, uh, I mean, yeah, out of all, you know, it's almost funny because just kind of seeing the reactions, obviously the Darnley storyline is so huge, mm -hmm. uh, and yet this almost kind of gets forgotten, even though it's like, wait, 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 this is a huge thing. What, what happens with a girl? Right, yeah. Yeah. Alina, what are your thoughts? What a What's happening? You know, I don't even know. I thought he was going to take her to go see people die, but then she just never comes back. Mm. It's like, where is she? And he has one shoe, and he's super emo. What's going on? <laughs> you know? I know, right? And that's, like, yeah. yeah. That's what the show does really well with each character. It's, it's, it's such a web mm -hmm. that you can follow each, each person in each country. And they have their own individual relationships, problems, and stories that are fascinating. That you only have time to see a like a smidgen of each person, but that's what the show does so well: is it keeps you coming back to know and to find out what's happening with each person in each country, each relationship. Absolutely. Right. And what's interesting for me too, one of the reasons why I am fascinated by him is because he is so. Even though he talks about Francis and and he makes mention of that. He's very different from Francis completely, mm. you know, mm. and, and, and they were both young kings, mm -hmm. and just the way they're dealing with everything just couldn't be more opposite. Yeah. So I love yeah. seeing that. And that's 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 what I think it, it was in history, and that's what creates mm -hmm. great drama, is is the conflict and the difference with which people handle power and uh, their position at court. Mm -hmm. That's what's interesting, right? If it was the same all the time, we'd go, ah, we've seen this before. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so a great big mystery left there. Um, I think I think she's. If I had to predict <laughs> anything, she's dead. Yeah, you think? <laughs> I think so. I don't know. I. It just seems so bizarre to me. I was like, maybe he's into some bondage stuff now. I don't. Wow. Maybe he's I think that like, was you. I think you were projecting. <laughs> um, I don't. But, I don't know yeah. what happened to her. 
But also, what's mm-hmm. great, what what Spencer brings to that character is that you would you believe anything. He's right. he's capable, and you've seen him do so much that that it is it is a real mystery. It is very unpredictable, and he's fantastic at that mm-hmm. because you really are watching a young king struggling, and he's definitely I can't tell you, but he's definitely going off a cliff at some point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It gets ugly. Oh, can't wait. Can't wait to see this. <laughs> well, typically I would say Narcisse's advice is really good, but for the girl, this time around, like, whatever the king likes. And then she just kept repeating, whatever yeah. the king likes, yeah. whatever the king likes. That's okay. yeah. whatever the king definitely likes. the mantra of, yeah, of, yeah. Uh, but it's just a pawn, isn't it? It's a pawn in a game of kings. Mm-hmm. That's, 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 and it's particularly Narcisse-like yeah. to find these little sort of chess games and to bring in people that are disposable to him. Mm-hmm. And Craig does that so well because you just love to watch him, love to hate him almost. But you're intrigued because you know that it's going to be juicy. I agree, but I don't think he had it in his mind. Like, again, if, if, I, if, if my theory is correct, Narcisse didn't intend to, for her to die. He just intended for no, her, okay, he's just going no, right. to yeah. sleep he's, with her and that's it. And yeah. That's it, yeah. It appears to me, and again, this is what the writers of Rain get so right, is that they, they bring in fictional characters and weave them brilliantly into very strong characters that are, that are very uh, well depicted in history. And you, you often can't tell which is which. And with Narcisse, he's a good propeller. He sets things in motion. Often it doesn't end as planned, but then he'll use that to set something else off. Mm-hmm. And it's this great way to keep a, a historical sort of platform or tale going mm-hmm. with a fictional character that's just constantly bringing in these sort of troublesome or, or playful ideas in yeah. yeah. situations. We Absolutely. got a comment in the chat room. Oh, so comment already. Allie Cat Diva said, I thought Charles Diva. had the same problem as Henry because... It didn't Henry run around barefoot all the time near the end? Didn't he? This is true. However, um, I'd love to pull up the full comment. I think from mm-hmm. the episode two, um, or perhaps it was episode one, in, in the comment section, someone wrote that it's slightly different from Henry and the gay. They get, like, it was basically an essay on why it was different. Uh-huh, right. So, I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it yes. isn't. I have no idea. But there, there are definitely trends of that time. I mean, the illness is that people died from the same stuff all the time. People mm-hmm. sort of went down the same routes a lot of the time. Do you know what I mean? There's, there is definitely a sort of thread that... Yeah. People do repeat the certain type of, I don't know if it's a madness or, or an illness. Right. Absolutely. And we're also coming off of the heels of the Black Plague, remember? Because we saw That's that. Yeah. So there's yeah. still yeah. got to be yeah. some lingering effects. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, but let's, uh, let's switch gears and talk about the, I want to talk about the Cardinal first. Mm-hmm. Because that yeah. was such a, I, I want you to know your opinion. Like, how did this come about? Claude is this, <laughs> right. un, like, she is so saintly. She is the savior. All of a sudden. All yes. of a sudden. Claude is the saint. Um, I thought it was great writing, actually. The mm. fact that, you know, Catherine goes and poisons this guy hoping he'll die. And doesn't. He just goes blind. And then uh, Claude is the one whose tears save him. And now she's a saint. Uh, which is just, if you know her character, which he didn't know, it's just hilarious yeah. to think <laughs> of Claude as a saint. Yeah. Um, yeah. So well, what do you think about it? I love it. I mean, I, I, I love... I love how he's sort of blinded by this, and she now uh, she's just going along with the plan, and, and she tells him, "Hey, you're more useful in Spain. Mm-hmm. You should go back to Spain." And so mm-hmm. obviously he does, but um, that triggers Lisa. I, I, I want to know more about Lisa because yeah. they are, you know, no, I mean, yeah, they're, right. they're, it's a it's a family dynamic, and mm. it's the first time that Catherine said, "Like, listen, I, I may be, appear to be a bad parent, but in Lisa's case, I was pretty bad." What does yeah. that mean? True. What fascinates me and what Megan gets so right is this sort of mother, this protective mother. She's always had, and I think even with Francis, there was this you know, real driven mother uh, protecting her sort of cubs, but also using them. So the minute that one of her daughters appears to be an angel, she finds a way to make that work. Mm-hmm. But Lisa does cause her a problem, which mm-hmm. is pretty evident. She's come in and she has shaken things up. For her, and it's very interesting to watch Catherine, who I think is uh, a fascinating character anyway, but to see Megan particularly portraying it. In t- at what point does she not take care of her children? At what point does she does she does she really rile up against them? And it's at the point where they challenge her power, mm-hmm. right, and and threaten her. Yeah, 
Well, I like, as we mentioned, I, I like her now having Narcisse because she can sort of yeah. Yeah. trade yeah. ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, however, he, going back to Charles, you know, the one thing that she needs is she might not necessarily agree with Charles's decisions, but she just needs him to make a decision. Yes. So he appears strong. What well, completely because because he 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 is king, and for her it's paramount that 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 he's doing in her eyes, I believe, the right thing, and it is a strong, powerful uh, son, and she she like is the puppeteer, but ultimately he's the king, so she has a power up to a point, but mm-hmm. as um, his uh, as her son. She needs him to be a good son and a great king in order for her to sort of weave her way. Yeah. And she doesn't have the power of regent anymore, so it, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. That's, that, that obviously hurts yeah. it. So um, I, I like where this is going. I'm, I'm always fascinated yeah, by it's, this. It's, it's, it's really it's fun a, to watch. Yeah, I, I can guarantee that it gets more fun. It gets more juicy. Spence <sighs> is great. He's, he's, yeah, like I keep saying, he brings a lot to that. He does. Yeah, yeah, they wrote him some good stuff. I, I can't tell you. Uh. He's got some good stuff coming up. Absolutely. And, and as I predicted, I did predict that Narcisse would come back no days off. He just comes <laughs> right yeah, in. Yeah, He's yeah, like, okay, yeah. what do we got to fix yeah. around here? Exactly. How do you get there so quick? That's the thing. Yeah. Do you notice that? It's brilliant. So Time travel. It, and it, it, like, it takes him an hour to get from, exactly. from, from England to Scotland. Maybe they had a bit of wind on their side. A lot, a lot of wind. A lot of wind. A lot of wind, yeah. I can imagine Narcisse just huffing and puffing into it himself. All right, I've got to get back home. Got stuff to do. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I can imagine that. Uh, but let's, uh, let's switch gears and go all the way to England. Um, not necessarily a lot in England in terms of time spent. However, major, major developments that ensue, especially with Gideon and Elizabeth. Mm. Um, and Elizabeth really kicks off what then perspires in Scotland and with your character and everything mm. like that. Uh, but Alina, you as the resident female, like yes. with, <laughs> this hatred, this, I don't know. Um, I mean, can there ever be peace between the two? I want there to be peace between the two, but obviously we know through history that just never happens. I think, and I've I've talked about this before on the show, because they're just women in power, um, especially monarchs, and there's always somebody gunning for their power. um, And, you know, Mary has kind of a right to the English throne as well. Mm. I just don't think they can ever, ever, no matter Mm. what Gideon tries to say, I just don't see it happening. I would love for it too, because I'm all about women power. Like, hey, you know, you two, <laughs> exactly. So am I. I think a lot of the, the world. world would be a better place. <laughs> exactly. but what, what, was, what was your initial reaction when you heard Gideon's plan to Elizabeth and saying, "Okay, this could achieve peace"? Right. And she's she's like, "Okay, you know what? Try it." I was all for it, and but at the same time, when she said, "You know, I'll give you guys Kent, uh, the castle in Kent," there was an inkling in me that something was up. Because I know from reading history about what happens later on. Um, but it, it, when it came out, it's just, of course, Mary wasn't going to go that way. She's, <laughs> she's just not. Mm. It just wasn't going to happen. Yeah, and, and you, you, you uh, as Darnley, yeah. you've had, um, you know, in the, at least what we've already seen, you've had the chance to interact with both Elizabeth and Mary. So what, what's yeah. Elizabeth in terms of her character like to interact with? Oh, she was great fun. That was that was the very first scene that I did was with uh, Rachel. Um, it was uh, with the director Stuart Gidiard, who, who I'd actually worked with on Nine or Two One Zero. Actually, so it was actually nice walking onto this set. Of course, it's always nerve wracking. It's always first day at school type thing. But actually, Rachel was fantastic and was uh, immediately fun. Um, and sort of, she popped my rain cherry, as it were, and it was it was it was a very pleasant experience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah, they, they seem very welcoming of newcomers. Yeah, so it's, it's completely. Here. These these guys have been on the show for a long time. Uh, the the sort of core that that were there even from season one, and I know Rachel joined in season two, I believe. Um, uh, yeah, the end they've of been season two, they've yeah. been on this, and it's a tough, grueling schedule. And I think the gap in between these two series shooting was not as long as it had been previously so they sort of had a turnaround and came straight back up to Toronto and they just wrapped when it was freezing cold like they couldn't speak it was so cold 
on locations. Um, and yeah, it, it, it is always a thing when you're joining something like this. And actually, um, what's great is that people will get to see that Darnley does become a very integral part of this. I mean, I mean everything. It's, it sort of grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. Um, but it is like jumping on a moving train, and you just at the beginning you just want to keep that train running because it works, and everybody knows what they're doing. They know their characters so well, and you jump in having done all the work and the research you have, but 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 you come in still trying to find your place in this show and it's always tricky challenging but actually these guys are incredibly uh, generous and I think new blood is always good and I think that if you've been kind of on a show for a long time you do relish the new blood coming in and challenging that's what acting is you come in and say right bring it mm -hmm. and so I was lucky to play this very well written character very very um, clear from the history books really who this guy was and what he did Mm -hmm. And so I was able to be the fox among the pigeons, as it were, or the chickens to come in and just throw everything out. And I think mm -hmm. they love that. Well, last week we talked about the similarities between Elizabeth and Mary. And as I think about it more, I, I want to get you guys' perspective on this, that Elizabeth to me seems very more rigid and always operates from a place of anger where even, even though Mary sometimes has to make a harsh decision, it, it comes mm. from a more human side. I would say, um, and I, I don't know if you disagree with me, you know, by all means. But w w what's your take on that? Hmm. Very interesting. <laughs> That's an interesting way mm. of looking at things. Um, I see that I see more, some humanity too, though, in Elizabeth. I get what you're saying, but I do see some. Huma you see those glimmers of, you know when she's making a decision, she does think through things, mm -hmm. but ultimately I think it always comes back to her power and keeping her power. Mm. And yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think mm -hmm. I think this is very interesting because you've got Elizabeth who she's sort of clawing on to keep power. Mm -hmm. Her whole thing is I've got it. How do I keep it? And at, and at what lengths will I go to make sure that I'm the only one in power ever? And you've got Mary, who's sort of this reluctant, she she didn't want to be there. She doesn't she doesn't kind of, she's the sort of victim of history almost, mm -hmm. um, and and is and is caused upon to be proactive. Whereas Elizabeth is constantly trying to keep hold of everything. I think that uh, Mary finds herself having to make these choices, and you get the impression from our show that that she has a real strong conscience sort of side she's very conscientious of her people there's a nobility which I think Adelaide captures beautifully in mm -hmm. this in that it's that you sort of follow her her struggle with doing the right thing she has a very strong moral sort of viewpoint whereas I think Elizabeth can be almost pushed into a corner so much into a panic yeah. that she then does drastic no. things right. which what will be interesting is when you see Mary perhaps pushed into a corner, what will happen then? All right. Very true. I'll, I'll <laughs> leave you that. Just going to leave that right yeah. there. Mm. Um, all right. Well, let's let's move to let's do move to Mary's side. And before we sort okay. of dive in with her, uh, I want to get your guys' thoughts on the developing relationship between James and uh, Mrs. Knox. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's. I think James is now starting to take to it much. Even though he was reluctant, I think he's the reluctance has gone away. I'll put it that way, perhaps. Hmm. I agree. You see a little twinkle in his eye when he's looking at her for some for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when he's around other people, especially Greer, when you know she mm. came up to him, he made it sound like oh it was no big deal. But yeah, he's he's taking a liking to her. It's interesting, isn't it? Because you you can I mean you can read anything into anything, mm. but it is interesting. You could potentially re read into what we just saw, Greer looking at James, James looking at Emily. You got this weird sort of, uh, and it will be interesting again to see how that plays out. Oh, the fans are all about Greer and James. Yeah, yeah. Wow. they desperately want that. You, I mean, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> it could happen. Yeah, keep watching. They're all good looking though. I mean, I. 
happily every watch either and every one of them. I don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, of, all of you guys on the show. Actually, we have the girls a comment. Phenomenal. Oh, a comment. We have a comment. So Who's Porto commenting? Rain Brazil says, Oh, hello, Brazil. We like Brazil. I was shocked to see that Darnley had feelings. I was expecting a 100% wow. evil character. That's very interesting because... Uh, the research that I did historically, he wasn't very liked. There's mm -hmm. there's a lot of letters which uh, have come up that are in print, that, and people didn't like him. Um, mm -hmm. And in one of my first conversations with um, the creator of McCarthy was was she didn't want that, and which is obvious. You you, uh, you don't want to just see an evil character. And I actually don't believe that anyone is fundamentally purely evil. There's there's always a reason, and the challenge playing this type of role is finding a point of view of why you do things, why, what, mm. what propels, what motivates. And what the writers, again, geniusely came up with and Laurie did was, was brought me Kira. So I, I'm, I'm actually in love with K Kira's my true love. And that's, that's a total fictional sort of character. And... Uh, it was a gift. It was an, as the season progresses, you'll see that it that it plays a huge part into understanding why Darnley does what he does and is actually ultimately very noble and a man of his word, even if you might not agree or like what his actions are and what he does. Well, it's one of the interesting things. You know, I'm, I'm sure Darnley couldn't have known it, but in terms of if there is a connection between Elizabeth and him, it's the fact that they mm. both really love somebody that they just couldn't have definitely yeah yes yeah that's that's and 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 that's again is much more interesting to watch and, and is much more human and a much more actually mm -hmm. realistic uh it, people go to extraordinary lengths when they're is spurned by love or 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 not allowed to pursue something that they need and want to pursue or or particularly in love i mean a broken heart can you know make you do all sorts of crazy things it can indeed right phil i, kn I know you've been there <laughs> i think we've all been in love yeah we've all suffered we're all nodding yeah. here yeah. we're all nodding yeah. here yeah. um i mean <laughs> speaking of all people like gideon my god mm. he really wanted yeah. this to go forward yeah and what an effort that did the sets on this episode in that lake oh, that when beautiful. they row over wasn't that yeah, just was absolutely gorgeous. spellbinding and Ben, bless him, charming. Oh, he's such a he's such a lovely man, a great actor, and and just you could see he, rowing when he was rowing. You, you, he knew what was there, <laughs> and you could see it in his eyes. Yeah, he could. Right, and then you saw it in her face. Yeah, <gasps> and it was it's beautiful. I mean. I just melt it. Must have taken him heart. ages, don't you think so, to build that thing? Yeah. Wow. I know, that's what I'm wondering. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. who put oh. this together? <laughs> right, again, very quick, very, right? There wasn't much time. Well, he must have a lot of Scottish uh, friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, can we He's talented. Me? He's talented. That Gideon, wow, you give him a few branches and a floating mm. pillow and, uh, yeah. Yeah. And twinkle yeah. lights. But poor him. I mean, he was really deceived by. Uh, he, he wanted this so bad. And yeah. He was deceived by Elizabeth. So, um, you know. So I'd ask. I'd ask because I know. But I'll ask. Um, which is an interesting thing. Is is that did anybody feel that that he was genuinely wanting uh, to persuade Elizabeth to allow him to marry Mary because he loved Mary, or was there a sense of loyalty still to Elizabeth by doing her a favor? Maybe you want to start? I'll, right? I'll start I mean, that's, yeah, you know, I get what you're because saying. Because that's an interesting... I think from my perspective, I looked at it as he was really in love with Mary still. Right, and was asking and her was, to do uh, right. him a favor, but exactly, spinning but it that it would save her as right, well. Right, like killing two birds with one stone yeah, in right. a way. Yeah. Still that's being like, I'm a countryman, and I, you know, it's country over Mary, but I love her, but mm. this will work out for both of you. Right. You yeah. know, because yeah. she's leaving her throne, which is what you want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and I get to marry her, and you're still in power. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he's always been... He, he he's shown at least in what we've seen that he's always country first, despite right. his feelings for Mary. And mm. to, to Alina's point, yeah, it's mm. very much okay. Mm -hmm. This just happens yeah. to kill two birds with one stone, so yeah. let's go for it. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I really do believe that that he thought that this would save Mary. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, but she has that That's great line. I wish I I hadn't written it down, but where she says, you know, I'd, I'd rather 
I'd rather do something meaningful in the time that I'm here than just. Oh, yes, yeah, right. it's it's mm -hmm. it's not what you do after you've gone; it's what you do when you're here, type thing, right. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's, it's mm -hmm. what you'll be remembered. Yeah. For is that the one you mean? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Paraphrasing horribly. <laughs> <laughs> but she makes the decision to uh, to to go with Darnley. Um, Lady Lennox convinces her. So. And this is, uh, yeah, I'm excited. We've gotten hints of mm. you, but now this is, I, you know, like, I imagine now this mm. is, this is going to be it. Yeah, no, it's, it's been a great build up. It's, it's a, um, it's interesting. Their relationship is very complex. It's one of political gain, which is, which is obvious. But, but I, I uh, would leave on the table. It, it, it again would be interesting to see if in there there is actual passion and actually real love. Is, is there? A, a uh, chance where there's sort of political sort of um, relationships in place where there's, that has room, mm -hmm. which actually lots of people have commented, is there room for true love in a political like, Well, we saw it with Francis. Uh -huh. Yeah, so. but, but over, a, yeah, over a, a, a long period of time. And they did that. I mean, I, I actually, when I watched Before I Was On, I, I loved the way that... Uh, Toby and Adelaide, they captured a real kind of innocence. And that was that was also very interesting for me coming in with a different character and knowing I was historically going to be her next husband. The relationship's very, very different. And it needs, as we've talked, it's great to see a different king do things differently. Mm -hmm. And all I can say is that it's um, a relationship that's very, very different to the Francis Mary, and I think that what Toby and Adelaide captured was very, very magical and uh, very sort of naive, actually, which is beautiful. Mm. This is not like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does beg the couple of questions. I mean, when you know, there, there's the dark secret from Lady Lennox, and so you know, when does he find that out? Does he ever find that out? Yeah. And does Mary sort of get roped into that just yeah. by association? It's it's a uh, yeah. It's uh, what's what's what is coming up uh, for Darnley is again the alliance with mother is is a, at what point as a lot of other characters what point do you turn your back on your your sort of namesake on your family name <laughs> at what point do you say enough is enough and often that's around when you're in love because it's because it's a big um, uh, groundbreaking experience and it's, and it's a very uh, passionate emotion right um, and what's going to be interesting is, is does Dani's alliance still stay with mother because she's ultimately his mother and he is a bit of a mummy's boy, which you will see? Or does it spurn him to go against everything mm -hmm. and be determined to not be as ambitious as his parents actually uh, were, mm -hmm. and particularly his uh, mother? Played by Nola in this, who's a lot of fun as well. <laughs> we got yeah, a, a question yeah. in the in the chat room. Mm. This is Come from on, Allison chatters. Wilson. She says, "So does this Hello, mean Allison. Darnley won't be evil to marry like history indicates?" Uh, won't. Well, again, we've got sixteen episodes. So if if it's just one or other, then it's going to be boring. I, I, mm. I, it's it's there's a fantastic mix. It's a big roller coaster ro uh, ride. I'm, I'm actually thrilled for people and fans of the show to get to watch this play out because it is it's a bit of everything it's really good juicy stuff well you know um i guess let's spin it this way right um one of the things we also talked about right before we went on air was the fact that because of the production schedule you were only mm. really able to focus on your role <laughs> yeah right it's, yeah yeah and where i'm going with this is the fact that um you know right now darnley his only vision of mary he's been told that mary wants to meet Mm -hmm. Darnley and mm -hmm. whatnot, and he sees her with Gideon, and he sees mm -hmm. essentially him and Kira, mm -hmm. and he's like, she doesn't yeah. want me. Yeah, and yeah. so now if he's going to come back into this, exactly, the door's and been closed. Exactly, and he's done what Mother wanted, and it happened, and it's like, ah, you're wrong. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Well done. There you go, Mother. I did what you asked. Right. Goodbye. I'm going back to mm -hmm. my. Uh, it's quite possible that he actually, at this point, didn't want to be king, or into, had and that was all his mother and his parents. He just wants mm -hmm. Kira. He wants to to lay low. He has no aspirations, possibly, at this point, for anything other than just living a nice, lovely life, a couple of kids in yeah. the countryside. Who knows? 
And um, sort of shifting gears, because I think overall we've concluded the episode, um, if not by all means, ask questions of there people in the chat. Um, but in terms of in, in terms of rain, um, you know, what was the how did you sort of get involved? And, um, mm. you know, you said you had mentioned that you were watching the episodes a little bit before then. And mm. so can you sort sure. of talk no, about I mean, the process? obviously. Um, you do a lot of research when you know there's a possibility that you're going to join a, a show. I um, was fortunate enough to have worked with uh, four of the writers on the show before. I'd shot pilots for mm -hmm. them. So there was a little bit of uh, knowledge of me going in and also of the people that were going to be creating this character. Um, but it is... Uh, there's a point where scripts come in very late uh, and we would have a table read of every episode. Often we'd walk into that room. Some people would come in in their costume because they're still shooting the last one <laughs> for the first time, read an episode. And it's difficult for everyone to keep abreast of all the characters, their relationships, all the countries. There's a point where you just have to take care of your own relationships, your own character and... There was definitely a point where I, I, I couldn't and didn't need to keep abreast of everything and let everyone else do their thing and, and you literally just had to come into it from your own character's point of view because that's ultimately all the... That's, that's really your job and then you trust that everyone else will bring the best work that they can. And then obviously when you watch it, you're like, oh my God, of course, that's what they were doing while I was in Scotland or England doing this. That was happening in France. Oh, they did a great job. No. But it is, you, we all just sort of hunkered down and had to get on with our own stuff. Mm -hmm. um, what was your favorite mm. episode? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Um, again, I... Um, the, it was always a joy when writers, again, that I'd worked with in the past came, at, their names were on the episode. That, that was always a thrill. Um, and I loved, it was two episodes that were directed by Megan, and that was, that was actually the only time I actually got to work with her, was as a director. Um, and her first episode's coming up, actually. Uh, I think it's four or five or six, maybe. I can't, I can't remember. But those were particularly wonderful. Um, uh, again, because it was the only chance that, that I'd actually got to work with her. And um, There's one episode which I loved, which I can't say too much about, but I can say one word, and that's boxing. Mm -hmm. Coming from a show I was on, Girlfriend's Guide, where I was playing a... Baker, I would use a lot of props. I was used to coming in to having a lot of action, a lot of doing stuff, a lot of props. And, so and for me, the challenge was being comfortable walking into one of these, you know, amazing sets, wearing all these costumes, just walking into the middle of a room and talking for three pages and not actually physically doing anything. That was a real challenge. So the episode I'm talking about, where I say boxing, gave me a chance to do something physical to train for. And that's coming up, and I think I think that would be a great one too. Well, a couple of follow up questions mm -hmm. on that. Um, you know, what is Megan like as a director? Like, mm -hmm. what, what was the type of direction that she would give you? And she's, I mean, she's obviously a, a, a um, highly skilled and intelligent actor, um, and so you did feel that her priority was definitely with us as actors. She knows the show so well, having been in it and also directed. Um, last season and and you there was an ultimate trust and I think it was it was wonderful to watch her learn and develop as a director technically mm -hmm. because it is the same crew pretty much been uh, the whole time through and sort of how to watch her navigate uh, and you can almost see her thinking if I was acting in this scene what would I need and just watching her sort of work out the technical side of it which of course is is the other side of any director is knowing mm -hmm. what lens, what angle, and how to tell a story, how to tell the whole story, not just of that particular scene or from her, her character's point of view. Mm -hmm. Well, um, my other follow-up question was real quick. Um, you know, because you've worked with some of these writers, mm. do they... Um, you know, do they have a sense of you, and do they write scenes specifically for you, knowing like no, to playing to your strengths? Yeah, I mean, I I'm a, a kind of actor. I like to keep an open dialogue. I'm I feel that I've now been doing this long enough. I'm old enough. I'm long in the tooth enough to actually take it on the chin. And actually, if you want to talk about something, let's talk about it. 
Equally, though, each script that comes in is like a puzzle, and it's deciphering, and it's, and that's part, that's part of the prep. That's part of the sort of Sherlock Holmesing through all these little clues that writers give you, because that's a script is there to be written. Your your job is then to interpret that and humanize it and work out what's the behavior, what am I doing, that sort of thing. Um, but definitely, uh, as we got going, I did see things in the script that I was thinking, oh, that's because they know I can do that, or, or I think I know exactly what they're referring to in this sort of the essence mm -hmm. of what this is. And that would often be reaffirmed if we were able to talk or anything would come in. Like, oh, I thought so. I thought that's what you wanted. Good. Alina, any, uh, anything any from the chat questions? or for you? Yeah, what's going on? Uh, chat room. There they're, was a question about Megan. Which they're you're all ready. watching the Oscars. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, Who's which, won? Can exactly. somebody can somebody comment? We've What's won because we've got the you latest. On the show. We've are. Oh, you know? that. There's a lot of love in this room. There's a lot exactly. of buzz love in this room. Exactly. Well, we all know that you know, Rain. This is the mm. final season. So, what have you got mm. kind of going on? We're, we're like, what can people expect to see? Oh, uh, for me, yeah. Uh, yeah. what do I have? I have actually. Yeah, I have a film coming out this year with Maggie Q called Slumber, which is an independent, which we, which I shot before before I joined um, Rain. Um, that's coming out at some point. I'm not. Quite, it was supposed to go to Toronto last year but it wasn't complete in time mm -hmm. um i uh, there may be a little bit more girlfriends going to divorce hope so i, I, I have a great time with with that nice. cast uh -huh. um right now it's pilot season so it's busy That's busy right. busy um yeah we'll see i don't have anything just yet to right. talk about apart from that a movie with uh, maggie q Right. Slumber. Looking forward to that one. Yeah. Um, we'll try to keep you guys updated too. So if there's any development, we'll, we'll let you guys know at home. Mm. Um, Thank you. Should we do uh, Castle Corner? Castle Corner. Yes. All right. So, Alina, you did this one. Usually I prepare it and you read it. <laughs> this time you picked it I and did. you're reading it. I went it. for a kind of fancy castle this time, you know. Fancy. Fancy. Oh, yes. Fancy. Hello. <laughs> it's All right. a big house. So, this is. Uh, Glamis Castle, and I'm sure we're going to have the pictures up there. Um, it's situated beside the village of Glamis in Angus, Scotland. It's the home of the Earl and Countess of Strathmore and Kinghorn, and is open to the public, which I thought was really cool. You can go there and see all this ornate furniture and whatnot. Mm. So, Glamis Castle has been the home of the Lane family since the 14th century, though the present building dates uh, largely from the 17th century. Uh, Glamis was the childhood home of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, wife, King George the S uh, wife of King George VI. Their second daughter, Princess Margaret, Countess of Snowdon, was also born there. Um, let's see, a castle fit for a queen by the time Queen Mary of Scots, that was another <laughs> reason why I picked it, mm. and her entourage visited Glamis in 1562. The East Wing was dominated by the main tower, which had been added in about 14... 35. The castle was enclosed within a fortified court. Um, here's a little bit of a fun fact. There's a small chapel within the castle with seating for 46 people. The story given to visitors by the castle tour guide states that one seat in the chapel is always reserved for the quote-unquote white lady, mm. which is supposedly a ghost which inhabits the castle, uh, thought to be Janet Douglas, mm. Lady Glamis. Uh, according to the guides, the chapel is still used regularly for family functions, but no one is allowed to sit in that seat. Wow. Yeah. It's a very good, it's a very pretty castle, yeah. although just from the location of it, it seems very secluded, like it's in the middle of just the woods. Exactly. I mean, there's, you know, some roads that lead to it, kind of down to Nabiosh, um, gardens and mm. all of that. But yeah, it, it seems like it's been restored since it's obviously, uh, since it's opening. So, well, this is a strange say. question, but do you have a favorite castle? Gosh, do I have a favorite castle? <laughs> so I know it's I the know, question yeah. everyone castle, asks. Actually, but actually, what, what, what surprised me a couple of years ago, I was living in Los Angeles and then was almost being a tourist going back home to London, mm -hmm. um, is the tower. The Tower of London is fascinating, of course, Henry VIII. Yeah, and, yeah. and I um, got to sit on his loo, which was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I... I Having sort of grown up in London, I, I hadn't ever been, and it's fascinating, and it's and it's again restored, and it has um, it sort of w within the walls. There's 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 houses where people still live, and it was one of the only places which was never bombed. 
<laughs> so it really is probably, I think, one of the oldest sort of rows of these houses that almost like lean against each other, and you can <laughs> they almost sort of move. But it's it's fascinating. I highly, highly recommend it. Tower yeah. of London. Putting that yeah. on my list next time I'm in London. Mm. See? Yeah. See, it was a good question. Yeah. yeah it's a great question. <laughs> um, all right. Let's move into predictions for the next episode. Well, Lena, yeah. you want to kick us off? Oh, good. Oh. Ooh. Here we go. This is where this things is, get uh, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Especially once we find yeah. out what Charles did. Yeah. <laughs> Oh goodness, yeah. I mean, Charles. I he's so emo. He's so he's going into his like goth phase. I feel like. Um, I think we're gonna figure out, that. yeah, what's <laughs> going on with him. I don't know what it is. I think we've got a whole bunch of things that could be up in the air with him. Um, I think Narcisse and Catherine obviously are gonna just be two peas in a pod from now on, and. <laughs> Continue to poison people. I don't know. I don't really have too many well, predictions. I, I'm exci- I, I really think Narcisse is going to get to the bottom of Charles, and he's going to, yeah. s- in a way, slap him around and be like, hey, get yeah. out of this. Um, it's interesting be, be, because he almost needs a big brother sort mm-hmm. of figure, doesn't he? Or like a father figure. Yeah, I think Narcisse yeah. something more father. Right, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Especially yeah. Henry, because Henry, uh, and he, you know, he didn't seem like the nurturing type. And Narcisse doesn't mean yeah. he just kind of yeah. tells you how it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is true. That is true, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then, you know, I think next episode we're going to find out. I, 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 the, the, the big thing is going to be um, how does Ken Darnley find out about the secret from the yeah. mother? You know, yeah. I, 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 we're going to see yes. this develop in terms of him and Mary. But there's going to be that when does when does it explode? Yeah, yeah, there's. I mean, you definitely get a sense there's a build up happening, and and there's a sort of a pressure cooker which is in place, and it's, it's at what point does this get so much that it actually repels everything and propels everything into a big action, which I think carries on no. through the rest of the series. Is it's just at what point does that? happen yeah. and continue to happen right, exactly. and that's what's going to be fun for everyone <laughs> keep watching Absolutely. and then, you know obviously that that's exciting enough but now elizabeth in a way has to sh- respond to what's happening because her plan mm. went out the window and so mary's still a threat yeah mm-hmm. yeah so she's got to yeah do i mean something. that's that's i mean historically regularly that's what's so fascinating apparently these two people never met and yet the battles and there it was it's such a a dramatic fight across countries and and these two powerful women you you know one like i say fighting to keep her place the other fighting to just stay alive and protect her honor and her people and do the right thing absolutely well that's about all the time we have for today thank you guys for joining us as always uh, please let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section. It's always so fun to read. Mm-hmm. Um, Alina, where can the people find you? The good people can find me on all social media at Alina Vision. And me too. Twitter, Instagram. I am Will Kemp. I'd love you to follow me there. We'll be live tweeting the episodes and keep keep watching. It's going to get more and more fun. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it from Will himself. Thank you guys once again. Thank you for having um, me, guys. We'll be back for Thank episode for four. Um, until next time. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.